All right, so this is a suggestion via donation. The name of the video is uh, Trevor Noah, uh, standing up against cancel culture and defending comedy. All right, let's check it out. Racial observations have very much formed, at least in the early stages, the backbone of your stand-up uh, comedy career. Do you now regret some of the jokes you made? And let me give you an example. You said, my mother, black South African, was saying, get me a white guy, get me a white guy. Well, my father was white Swiss, of course, he liked chocolate. Is it funny? Bro, that is hilarious. Listen, I, Trevor Noah is an interesting guy, right? I mean, I've encountered a couple of his uh, like sets, and they were solid, right? But that one right there, that that very specific joke, yeah, it's, it even sounds funny with her saying it. It's hilarious. Lighten up a little bit. Do you regret that? Because some people say that's not really very funny. But Who the are these some people? Laugh. Everyone can say something is not really funny. It's the way some people don't but like is it more than that? Okay, let me give you an example. We have a, a very well-established black comedian in the Britain called Lenny Henry yes. and he has said that he regrets doing that kind of joke where he said he would wipe his sweating brow and say huh I'm leaking chocolate oh my god but, is, but that is different well the Swiss love chocolates right is not a term listen I'm sorry I'm sorry both of them were kind of funny bro I'm, that may make me a bad person I don't know Potentially. But you're referring to your mother's skin color as chocolate. What he yes, said. Because my mom is. Listen, guys. Guys, listen. Listen. Hold on, bro. All right. My literal. When my son was four years old, okay, he, he walked up to me. He licked me and said, Ew, you don't taste like chocolate. Listen, I laughed my ass off then. All right. I don't know. I find it funny. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just. I, I, I don't know, guys. I don't, I don't maybe I don't get it guys maybe I'm broken or something that was hilarious to me Proud to Let be me dark. but no I don't taste like chocolate bro. beautiful chocolate yeah. that's what she's saying well. and this is if you in the book I talk about this as well I go I saw people and race as chocolate bro I got more jokes guys more jokes all right bro my wife's grandmother right asked her literally is he brown all over Guys, come on, we got jokes. She's like nine. She was like ninety years old, bro. All right, just under, just understand that for a second, okay? Uh, keep in mind, you know, my wife's grandmother, um, she probably, and I mean never, has been in the presence like in within like a household of someone who looks like me. That's 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 a fact, bro. Right, um, ninety year old woman from Granada, Spain. All right, trust me. She, she had questions. I wasn't offended because obviously it's just pure like inquisitive nature of of people who look different than you. That's really what that is. Guys. I wouldn't use that. When, no, I wouldn't when use I, that. No, no. I, I'm that color. But when I, I wouldn't up, say listen, that. But, when I when I yeah. grew up, when I grew up, I believed that all people were chocolates. My mom was dark chocolates. Right. My dad was white chocolates. Uh -huh. and I was milk chocolates. Okay. So I see. So all you see that as funny, but do you not realize chocolates? that some people might not like that? And Lenny Henry went <laughs> man on said, to I say, see all people as chocolates. About how he was leaking chocolate. He <laughs> says, I knew there had to be a better way of trying to put the message over, putting your jokes over, without having to pick on people because of their color or because of their race. Not picking yes, on people, his bro. View, his view is different from yours. Because he's Lenny Henry and I'm Trevor Noah. Right. He but he's talking, also he's black. Yes, but he was talking about leaking chocolate, implied. She said she just said, "Oh, but yeah, but you guys are both black." Listen, generally people who are deeply melanated are are definitely not like a monolith. There are all types of dark skinned people from all around the world, guys. Um, people in 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 in, uh, in Nepal, guys. They're they they're probably darker than Trevor Noah, guys. Um, and then you have people in India who are darker. Um, what exactly are we, are we talking about here, right? I mean, um, dark skin is not like specifically unique to Africa, guys. It's just not. Um, it, maybe the phenotype is potentially, but overall dark skin is just not, right? Uh, so when you try to say and try to paint every single deeply melanated person into a literal box, which she, for some reason, um, is trying to put everyone in a box, bro. I have my lived experiences are absolutely different than Trevor Noah's, right? Um, and it also absolutely different than 
any other person that looks like me, right? Um, she seems to be playing the victim a little bit, guys. And I'm not really a fan of, of just consistently playing victim, bro. But either way. Trevor Noah. Yeah, he but he's talking, also, he's black. Yes, but he was talking about leaking chocolate, implying that his skin color was not something that belonged to him. That is a different not, joke. He's that just is a different trying to idea. say that his skin color is chocolate. No, 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 no. You're splitting hairs here. No, but that is exactly what we should be doing. Because what you're doing okay. is creating... I'm not sure I would, you're creating I'm not sure jokes. I would say. No, Flip you're, it creating monoliths, you you're creating monoliths of jokes, and that's not fair to do. Every single joke has a context. Every single joke comes from a place. The most important thing with comedy is context. Right. Without context, no conversation is complete. Without context, no communication can but truly be appreciated. But somebody could take that out of context. Like, yeah, then you've so said it. I'm putting it to you then. Are you not, given what Lenny Henry said, are you not guilty perhaps with some of your routines or a joke like that, uh, reinforcing prejudices and promoting stereotypes in the minds of people who may be inclined to think like that? And then they'll think, oh, Trevor Noah says, his mother's chocolate, I'm going to go around saying that to my black friends, and they might take offence. You could be reinforcing prejudice. Bro. You could be doing anything if you are not doing the opposites. <laughs> How your uh, action is implied... Oh, he's good, guys, he's good. ...does not define what you were doing. Okay, let's look at another aspect of race. No, 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 no. He flipped it on you. You have to answer. Moved just Make a statement. years ago to the United States. Your, your routine as a comedian... Um, often mimicked Africans and also African-Americans. And about African-Americans, you have said this, you are not African, but we play along. It's a very loose term, African-American, because half the time you use it for people who aren't even African. Bruh, listen, firstly, let's go ahead and point this out here. Um, if you are from America and born in America, I'm sorry, you, you are American, right? That, that's just what you are. I don't like the hyphens. Um, because if you want to start giving people hyphens, then everyone need hyphens, bro. All right. So that's just what it is. Um, you are absolutely American. Uh, my ties to Africa are zero. I don't have any ties to Africa directly, guys. Um, not like that, at least. Right. I mean, obviously, if you go back into my my bloodline, um, I come out to be 38 percent West African coming from specifically Togo and Benin, um, which is obvious because that's where um, the people of basically Ghana were selling um, Africans. That's what that that's that's the reason, right? Um, so yeah, guys, my my direct tie to Africa is absolutely horrific, guys. Right? So, um, but yeah. Anyway, but long story short, I don't really have any. Yeah, I'm American, all right. And if you're watching this and you look like me, and you're born in America. You're just plain all American, all right? Um, I don't like the hyphens. Let's get it. Very loose term, African American, because half the time you use it for people who aren't even African. As long as you're black, they say African American. I didn't deliver it like that. You're not doing my jokes justice. Okay, right. Yeah, that was I'm that was trash. Her, and I'm not a comedian. No, no, no. no. But the way you, you did that, it. That's, but but no, I'm no, just no. asking: uh, Are they not African American? Here's the here's here's what you're missing. Is she picking apart every single line of his jokes right now, guys? What you're doing right now is the equivalent of me saying, now it's raining more than ever. Uh, I'll be here with you forever. You can always be my friend standing under my umbrella. Ella, 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 Bro, he's so good. He's so good. Absolutely. I'm not doing everything that was within the context of the song Umbrella by Rihanna. Right, right. When you were doing comedy, I remember that the uh, the entire line that he uh, delivered, right? Um, he was talking about how he he got onto the plane and like the first thing, uh, but he got off of the plane and um, somebody was like, "Oh, what's up, my n word?" Right? And then he obviously then re re you know reciprocates it because he's like he's so happy he's now uh, at least that. Because guys, if you remember that movie um, with Don Cheadle where he played basically uh, was it Rwanda, and like one of the UN soldiers were like. You're not even the N-word, basically, right? Uh, you're an African, right? Um, that's kind of the thing, guys, right? Words. I spoke it. My eyes, Most likely my that he was playing on. With an audience is completely different. 
people can see when you are being playful. People can see when you are saying something. So you're being playful about that. That you don't believe. That is what satire so is, okay, though. Fine. You're poking holes. So you're po yeah. So so, you're, so in in so that. So you don't believe what so you say. Though. No, 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 Let him no. speak. Though. What you're what you're leaving out in that whole joke is what I was talking about was how in America, in America, Anglo-Saxons had successfully removed Americanisms from minorities. So every single group in America had an identity attached to the Americanness except white Americans. So it's African American, Asian American, Hispanic American, Latin American, uh, Native well, American. Well, you don't know. You have Irish yet, American no, there, no, no, white, no, you no, have no, Polish no, American. No, 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 no. But that, that, okay. that didn't no. become on a, on a box. And this is a joke for Americans. Understand that. So as an American, they understand this. All right. But on the boxes, there is no Irish American. But, there is only white. But, not but there is African American uh, and there is Asian American. But you know, yeah. there, do you get what I'm saying? Right. So, I do so get that's what you're saying. But the point the I'm trying to make is that there was a bro. I just put other and move on. A, a shift amongst the Black American community to start calling themselves African American. They didn't want a yes. definition by default. Bro, that was Jesse Jackson. Not, don't don't say it's a shift between like specifically all African Americans. That was specifically a for the most part, a race peddler. That's what that is. That's where that came from. All right. So let's, you know, have some intellectual honesty. I.e. you were not white, so therefore you were black. Yes. They wanted to have a hyphenated identity that linked them with the continent mm -hmm. of their ancestors. And therefore, when you say, oh, they're not really African, they're playing along, you cannot disconnect what you say from this debate that's really, you know, captured the imagination of the african-american black American. she's literally talking about my subgroup right and i'm telling and i'm saying the exact opposite of everything she's saying american yes. community and also the point i, I don't like the separating thing guys it's weird it now feeds into a debate that's current in the united states for example kwame kwayama the black britain theater director in the united states says he has okay. conversations with african-americans now who are saying we want to go back to being called black american because we don't have anything in common with this recently arrived african-americans uh -huh. be they somalis niger right i'll absolutely take black american for the most part if you would ask me like for example um if ever i'm asked uh like outside of the country i'm outside of the country a lot right so where are you from well i'm well i'm just an american obviously but then if um if they get deeper um uh, you know I, i'm obviously black american i'm american that's that's it i don't really like the I have no ties to to Africa. Uh, even going on to the African continent, uh, we have not many similarities, guys. Experience South Africans, such as your, as you, you know, they have different language and so on. Appearance so is one thing. What but you say feeds into that debate, and it sounds like you're saying there is a difference between African Americans and Black Americans. There definitely is a difference, right? But these are differences that can be celebrated or used to separate people. Noting differences does not implicitly make it a bad thing right when you are noticing differences you can note them for a good reasons it's the same reason we notice different colors or we notice different flowers that can be a good thing if you're using it to celebrate you can use that same thing the same way apartheid did to separate people when you talk about african americans the one conversation that i was talking about was i was traveling america and i was going to a lot of universities and i came to realize in many universities in america the conversation you are having right now, they had, they had an African American uh, student body, and very quickly they noticed a shift, because they could not lump black people into a monolith. They could not lump because there were people from the Caribbean who said we are not African American. Yep. There were people from Africa who were like, these are not our views. We are Africans in America. Right. So there that's is a difference. interesting. Yeah. And so what people yeah. themselves did was they said, you can't just lump us into this group. Fine. And does that difference mean that it doesn't Fine. act as a cohesive form? Because I'm thinking in 20 no. there, there is there, there is no cohesiveness um, within black Americans. Th there, there really isn't. There really isn't. There's none. Um, I don't even, you know, she for some reason thinks that every single person that is considered black within the borders of the United States of America is the same exact person. I think that she thinks that there's some type of unity. There's, there's like no unity. There's, there, I don't know, right? It's just not, it's not there like that. Um, and specifically when people are coming from apps, like he's saying, if they're coming from different countries with different cultures, not really, bro. 
there, there just isn't. There's none of that. Ngozi Adichie, the celebrated Nigerian author. It's sad. She said that but when she visited the U.S., she felt that her African-American classmate was annoyed with her because she didn't share their anger. And she said that she was not burdened herself by America's terrible racial history. That difference, does it result in the African-Americans who've arrived recently in the United States, such as yourself, acting differently or having a different psyche from the black Americans who are the descendants of slaves? and of Okay, that is a thing, absolutely, right? Um, but it's not something that, that matters like that. It, it matters, it matters a little bit, I will say. But I do think that when Africans from Africa come directly to the Americas, they do a lot better than... Um, Black Americans that have been here, uh, that have been dis that that were descendants of slaves, absolutely they do because they had nothing. They they don't have a similar a similar past, right? Um, but keep in mind, like there's a lot of there are a lot of Black Americans who are not in that very specific situation. Yes, the past happened, it did, right? But that's not a part of the daily thought process, right? If that makes any sense. Like me, I, you know, I, listen, the only thing that has held me back in life is me not wanting to get up, if that makes any sense, right? Uh, and what I mean by that is like, there's nothing really, I can't think of any blocks that have blocked me from, from like success in kind of like anything that I've really done other than me just not doing it, right? Like, so, I would say the hardest thing about starting something is starting it, just the starting aspect of it, like getting over the concept of allowing the victims, this like weird victim mentality to just, just like break you and, and, and conquer you, right? And I can definitely say that unfortunately, there's a lot of like, you know, black Americans who are, are who are just caught in this like web and it's, it's, it's sad. And this is why when Africans do come, mainly and literally, when Africans come to America, they dominate. All right. And they dominate in like every field that they enter into because they have had a different lived experience and they are not just inundated with this like this overbearing victim mentality. I've lived for many, many years, obviously, in the US. Well, I will say this. I will be careful to not. Uh, comment on the experience of every single person because I'm only myself and I can only experience the people that are Thank you for saying what that. I know is this. In terms of our racial histories, South Africa and America are very similar. Well, specifically, I'm not referring to really specifically South Africa um, because most of the um, most of the times if, I, if I'm to encounter an African within the borders of the United States, they're probably going to be from West Africa, uh, mainly like Nigeria is normally where we'll see a lot of like Africans. When I talk to a black American person, there are many stories that we share as human beings. There are many oppressions that we have, have experienced through our uh, selective, uh, you know, uh, oppressors. Um, I think those are the things that many people can relate to across the board. So there's more to unite, even is, though you say there, there are differences. There is definitely more to unite, especially yeah. when you are being oppressed as a group. Because you must remember, when you are in the U.S. as a black African man, I can tell you now that if you have an encounter with the police, they are not going to split the hairs. They're not going to that say, "Excuse me, Trevor, no, are you from South Africa yes, or are you from that, Detroit?" That doesn't happen. No, that fine. doesn't. Racial. Guys, I'm not really a fan of the the, uh, the interviewer, guys. I don't know. Um, maybe she's good in, like, something else, guys. But the fact that she just kept trying to go back to just, like, victimness, guys, it, it stresses me out a little bit to encounter. Um, but, yeah, he's definitely, you know, he's a really good person to interview because I don't think that he's... Uh, easily swayed right i mean he's extremely sharp mentally and that i think um, absolutely helps uh his cause let's say right um but all right guys listen you guys all have an absolutely amazing day and enjoy your day thoroughly definitely let me know in the comments also exactly what do you guys think <laughs>